Right, let's watch Pompo. Wait, what does that say? Damn it, I knew I'd miss one out. Hello, lovely people of YouTube, and welcome back to Mark on Life and Ghibli time. Thank you to everybody who watched last week's episode, which was Porco Rosso. If you haven't seen that episode, I will leave a link in the description and at the end of the video as well. Now, last week, I told you all that I was going to be doing Pompoco this week. But a very eagle-eyed viewer who I'm going to give a shout out to now, BDT87, I hope I'm getting that username right, spotted very accurately that actually, as I'm going chronologically, I have missed one out. I was going to cover this film at the end with the sort of extras because I didn't think I'd be able to get hold of the Blu-ray this soon. But my copy has arrived, so we are going to go full chronological. Today we are covering Ocean Waves. Now Ocean Waves is a little bit of a Ghibli aberration because it wasn't a full theatrical release. It was a TV movie. It first aired on the 5th of May 1993. And so it wouldn't normally be in the canon of Ghibli films, but I wanted to include it because it's a really underrated little film and a bit of a gem. The Japanese title of this one is Umiga Kikweru, which means I can hear the sea. Um, and actually, that's still pretty much how it's known uh, in America, in that territory. And it wasn't given a proper English title for years and years um, until the, the European Western release was changed to Ocean Waves. I actually still have no idea why it's called that. Um, in America, I can see because it's the literal translation. Um, but I don't even know what the Japanese name is about. Either I can hear the sea or ocean waves. It's set in a sort of um, town where there's water. But I don't really see how it relates massively to the story or the characters or whatever. If somebody out there does know, and it's a very obvious metaphor that I am missing... Um, please do tell me, but at the moment, slightly confusing title, but hey, there you go. This is the first Studio Ghibli film that is not directed by either Miyazaki or Takahata. Um, basically, Ghibli wanted to make uh, a movie for their younger employees. They wanted to give a film to their employees in their 20s and 30s and, and have them make a film quickly and cheaply. Uh, although, of course, as is always the way, that didn't happen and it went over budget and over schedule too. So it was directed by Tomomi uh, Mochizuki, who has also directed many other anime series which are great. And again, this film is also based on uh, source material, novel of the same name by Sayako Himuro. Because this is a TV movie, and like I said, a pretty underrated film in the Ghibli canon, it has no English dub. So there are no Hollywood stars in this one at all. The Japanese cast, who are fantastic, because they're always fantastic, do their job uh, brilliantly. But yeah, uh, no dub for this one. So what happens in Ocean Waves? Well, we are set uh, in the town of Kochi in Shikoku, which is the smallest island in Japan. Japan has four islands, as I'm sure you all know. Um, Honshu, which is the biggest island, which has all the big cities like Tokyo and Kyoto and that kind of stuff. Uh, Hokkaido, Kyushu and Shikoku, so we're on the smallest island that there is. And it centres around a young guy called Taku uh, and his life at school. The story is basically um, a, a flashback, 99% of it is a flashback. So Taku is returning from Tokyo University and he's on a plane going back to Kochi, his hometown, which is an idyllic tiny little village. And um, it's all played out while he's on the plane and we see flashbacks from two years ago while he was still living there and at school. And at the start it mainly centres around Taku and his friendship with Matsuno, another boy in his year. They're not in the same class but they've bonded over a few things which starts with um, the, the school trip being cancelled and they're both protesting and so they're the only boys who do so they sort of come together and bond in a, in a friendship over that. And then we add our third element, which is the love triangle. Our third character, who is the sort of other main character, which is um, Rikako. Rikako is a girl who's come all the way over from Tokyo to this little town, and she doesn't really want to be here. And both of them like her, so we get this sort of little teenage love triangle between the three of them. Finally, they get to go on their school trip after all, and they get to go to Hawaii. And 
Rukako comes to Taku and asks him to lend her some money, quite a lot of money. And she's very different. She's from Tokyo and he finds her very brash and brusque and sort of forward compared to the people that he's used to. And he lends her the money because he's nice and he likes her and so he wants to do that for her. But unfortunately he learns something not that fun. He finds out that she has told him that she's taking the money because she's lost it all. And you know, it, she just lost all her all her travel money. Turns out that's not the case at all. She wanted the money and she's borrowed some from Matsuno, the other boy who likes her as well. Um, so she can go home and see her dad in Tokyo. And so she lies about going to Tokyo, says she's going with another girl. Taku turns up to the airport and although he doesn't want to go because he's disappointed, annoyed at her, he does because he doesn't want to be her, uh, let her go on her own. And so they stay in this hotel. She sees her dad. It doesn't go very well. Um, they're staying in the hotel together, which is quite a lot for, for teenagers. Um, and she's very bossy and treats him a bit like a servant. You know, she sleeps on the bed and he has to sleep in the bath. She sees other boys, all that kind of... It's, it's not a great trip for him. And then when they come home, she basically just ignores him. Completely ignores him like it's never happened. And then... Uh, Taku finds out that Matsuno has asked her out and she's been very rude to him, absolutely horrible to him because she wouldn't go near a boy from the village and they are, they're all horrible. And so he goes into the classroom and confronts her and has it out with her and that does not go very well at all. And after that, Rikako becomes a sort of recluse in the school, just disappears, doesn't see anyone, doesn't go to the festival, doesn't go to the dance, nobody sees her again really. And then she gets picked on by the local girls in the school because she doesn't really have any school spirit. And Taku sees this and he doesn't defend her. And he, I think he's thinking, well, why should I? You know what I mean? But um, Matsuno finds out about this. And even though he should be happy because he, doesn't, he shouldn't like her after all this, he hits uh, Taku because he didn't defend her. And after that, none of them speak again. They graduate. They go to different parts of the world. Sorry, different parts of... Japan, sorry. Taku goes to Tokyo, Matsuno goes to Kyoto, and bizarrely, Rikaku, who didn't want to be here in the first place, goes to Kochi, the local university. And we think, well, that's the end of it. One well, sad end to a story. Then we flash back to the present where Taku has come home, and it's two years later, and it's the summer break. And uh, Taku and Matsuno come together, and they get over their problems. They, it's been, it's been years. So they rekindle their friendship. And there's a class reunion that night in a bar. And they're all having fun. But it's slightly sad because Rikaku doesn't turn up. You know, they both really want to see her. Even though it wasn't exactly the nicest situation. But they sort of want to see her. And so they have fun. They get to, to see everybody again. And then they go their separate ways again. Although they've learned that actually the reason that Rikaku isn't there is because... Possibly she wasn't really in Kochi the whole time anyway at university. She actually secretly got um, uh, her exams done in Tokyo. So she's actually there. So she, that's where she went to, to possibly go and see Taku. But we don't really know. And so they go their separate ways and they go back to university. And then we see Taku back at Tokyo Station or one, sorry, one of the train stations in, ta in, uh, in Tokyo. And he sees what he thinks is Rikako from the other side of the platform. And I'll leave it there. I don't want to spoil the end for you. I'll let you watch it. So as with a lot of Studio Ghibli's, what is this film about? It's about coming of age. They're all about coming of age in one way or another. About the problems of school. Do they really matter? The things we think are so important when we're at school. Do we worry about them afterwards? Probably not. Do we really care? Probably not. And can friendship go beyond that, that kind of stuff? It's a nice, small drama told really well. Do I recommend Ocean Waves? Yes and no, actually, on this one. Do I recommend watching it? Yeah, of course. Now, as I said before, if you don't like reading subtitles, it's probably not for you because there is no dub on this one. Although you're an anime fan because you're watching this, so I imagine you don't mind subtitles too much. Also, uh, the Blu-ray is about as Spartan as you can get. Um, if you're like me and you collect them, then by all means go go grab it. But for 15, 20 pounds, there is nothing on the Blu-ray. You get the DVD copy and the Blu-ray copy, but there are no extras of any kind. No dub, 
no trailers, behind the scenes, voiceover stuff, pictures, script, nothing at all. It is just the film. So probably a bit much of an investment for somebody who isn't a big fan. But should you watch it? Yeah, of course. Watch them all. So that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching. Give me a big thumbs up if you like this video. Leave me a comment. Are you one of the people that's actually seen Ocean Waves? If you have, let us know what you think of it. Share this video any way you want and subscribe to my channel to see more. Next week, we'll be covering Pompoko. Yes, we absolutely will be, I promise you. I'm on all the usual social media platforms. You know, as always, I am Mark Joseph Actor on Instagram and Twitter and all that kind of stuff. So go follow me there now. So I will see you back here next week for Pompoko, definitely. But for now, from me, Mark on Life and Ghibli time, I will speak to you soon.